God the Father. I believe God the Father loves me. Prisoners free and gives them joy. And that God promised us that He will. And he has become a father to the fatherless. So Welcome back to the I Believe presentation series. Today we will deal with God the Father. Are you interested to know what God the Father is like? We will find the answer in his word. But before we open it, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you are in love with us in love with us as a father loves his children, as a parent loves his or her child. I pray, Father, that we might experience your love and the knowledge of who you are through the power of your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to thank Pastor Donovan Grigg for taking us through, number one, the Holy Scriptures, number two, the Trinity, as we make our way through these 28 fundamental beliefs. I do hope that you are finding these uh, presentation and our podcast series very uh, spiritual, as uh, spiritual food and uplifting. And as we uh, discover more today, according to the Bible, who God the Father is, I know you will find a blessing in that. As means of introduction, friends, we will just briefly discuss what we will cover in this topic today. In this episode of I Believe, the, we will discover what the Bible says about God the Father. We will also look at God the Father as the sustainer of life. One thing that is very important, we will look at the character of God and something that I'm very excited about is what it means to fear God and give Him glory. And lastly, we will touch on how God relates to us, His children. Yes, friends, today we will discover what the Bible teaches us about God the Father. Please do take your Bible with you on this journey. The Bible teaches us that God is our Father. He is a good father. He is a perfect father. He is a loving father. You know, human fathers may fail us, but we have a father in heaven who loves us with a perfect, unconditional love. Jesus taught us to call him our father, to call his father our father in what we know as the Lord's Prayer. Our father, hallowed be thy name. We know that God the Father, He exists in eternal and mysterious unity with the Son and the Holy Spirit as one Godhead and is the source of all life. Yes, friends, God is our Father in heaven and we are His children. Just like human parents love their children, so God loves us. But you see, unlike our parents love his love is perfect. He loves you even more than your earthly parents ever could. It's incredible to think that the God of the universe, the one who created it all, loves you and calls you his child. First John 3 verse 1 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. Wherever you are, my friend, today, remember that you are a child of God. If your earthly parents have abandoned you, if there's broken relationship, or even if you are unable to see them anymore, remember you are not an orphan. You are a child of God. God, my friend, is a father to the fatherless. And this is very important to know. God's love is perfect. 
and His grace and His mercy never runs out. It's a sad reality, yes, friends, in our sinful world that some people are without an earthly father who loves and protects and guides them the way he should. If you have a father who has wounded you, your, or wounded your soul, you can rest assured today that God is a father to the fatherless. You can rest assured today that God loves you with an everlasting love. Psalm 68 verse 5 says, Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in His holy habitation. You see, when we discover and when we go back into biblical times, the Bible was written in a, in a, in a in a stage, or at least in a place where, where there was no husband or male figure, or in this case, a father, there was no income for the little household or for the tents or for where they were staying. For it was written in a time where males were the providers, where males were the protectors, and even so today, but more so back then. So when we understand that uh, God is the father of the fatherless, uh, this is said in that context because if there was no father, if the father died, oftentimes the family was thrown into poverty. So uh, we can understand that God was telling these people that are suffering that he still protects them even if the father of the house is no longer there for he is a good and perfect father. Yes, friends, 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. You see, there's something very wonderful about God's love, and because He is love, even the punishment that He gives is different. Even the punishment um, that He so-called dish out is different to the punishment that we are accustomed to. The Bible teaches us that in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, and in the, in the Garden of Eden, He desired a relationship with Him, much like a parent feels toward the newborn baby. Yes, friends, Acts 17 verse 28 says, For in Him we live and move and have our being, for we are indeed His offspring. You see, God formed humans, humans in His own image, setting us apart from any other living thing on earth. It's true, we don't know what God looks like. So, His image is defined by who He is. He bestows some of His key attributes, my friends, upon us because we are made in His image. Thus, we have a higher intelligence as the creatures around us. We have a more appreciation for life than the um, creatures around us. We can love deeper. We understand God deeper. You know, uh, I like to think of the example when God created a uh, man and a woman, you know, he created them from the dust of the earth and he probably looked in the river uh, or a mirror or something that reflected his image. And as he looked, he formed man and he looked and he formed man, but not only physically, he also, as we have just said, he has placed key attributes within us to love, to feel, to understand and have an intelligence much higher than those other creatures and things he spoke into existence. Genesis 1, 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Yes, we have used this freedom, the fact that God has created us, and with it comes a freedom, freedom, but we have used it and often go our own way instead of God's. You see, God created us with this freedom of choice, but the fact remains that we are not robots operating on a program. God created us with that freedom. God gave us our own individual minds, my friends. So God created us, even though He took the risk in the fact that we might go our own way, but God cannot accept anything else uh, or, or love that is not 
uh, a choice. You choose to love, my friend. So God wants you to choose Him as well. Colossians 1 verse 16 says, For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Him and for Him. Yes, friends, God spoke the world into existence. As the Creator, our Father God spoke all that exists today and it came to be. He is the Creator, my friends. That is a key attribute of who God is as well. Let's now look at how, how we are different from other creative acts. The nature, uh, this quote says, um, Ellen White says, um, the nature of God's image is holistic. When Adam came from the Creator's hand, he bore in his physical, mental, and spiritual nature a, like, a likeness to his maker. Yes, friends, you are made according to the Creator of the universe. There's a physical and a mental and a spiritual a likeness to how God created us. Now, let's move on to our next subject or subheading here. We will now look at the character of God. God's character, my friend, is love. He is perfect and holy and merciful. And He, my friend, is full of grace. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about the character of God. Let's look at some of his attributes. The first one that we will look at, and we must start here, my friend, is the fact that God is love. You know, Romans 5 verse 8 says, While we had sinners, Christ uh, died for us. That is an act of love, my friend. But more specific, specifically, 1 John 4 from chapter, uh, verse 7 to verse 16 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does love does not know God, because God is love. Can it be any clearer than that, my friend, that God is love, and when He acts, He acts out of love. Secondly, God is just. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is merciful. He is love. And because He is love, He is judge. He is just as well. He does not overlook um, inequality, my friends. He does not overlook when people are in prison. He does not overlook those that are suffering and even punishes the wicked because he is just. God is also merciful. God is also merciful. The Bible teaches us in Ephesians, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. My friend, it's by grace that you have been saved. It's the fact that God is merciful. He oftentimes, and I might be getting ahead of myself here, he often take, take more time than what is necessary because he is merciful. Yes, friends, we also know that God is not only love, God is not only um, just, but as we say, God is all-powerful. God is all-powerful. He has created these things uh, that we see and that we can touch because He can. He is all-powerful. There is none greater than Him, my friends. Number five, we note that God is patient. In 2 Peter 3 verse 9, the Bible teaches us, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. God is patient. And oftentimes we ask this question, Why is the Lord not coming? Why is He not taking 
eliminating the evil from this world. My friend, if he needs to eliminate the evil from the world, some people will unfortunately go with it. But because God is patient, He wants you, He wants me, my friend, to uh, come to the knowledge of who He is and let go of our unrighteous ways. He is a patient God. Number six, another favorite of mine says, God is good. James 1.17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Everything good and everything perfect is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. My friend, the Bible teaches us that God is good. Now, I need to say this, and we will get to this later on in our studies, but oftentimes we think that God allows death or God causes death. But mind you, if God is good and God and He can only give good things, my friends, I want to submit to you and say that God allows things, but He certainly cannot be the cause of things that are bad, for God is good. God is also holy, my friends. First Peter 1 verse 15 uh, to 60 says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Yes, my friends, that is who God is. He's a holy God. Further, we will look at the fact that God never changes he always remains the same. And because He is good, because He is holy, because He is love, these attributes, my friends, and the further study, the further things in, the, in our study, He cannot change. He cannot uh, bring Himself to a different point. He remains the same. Also, God is all-knowing. The psalmist says, Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it. All together. Even before we have spoken anything, God is all knowing. And that's a comforting fact, my friend. When you are suffering, when you are happy, when you are um, unhappy, my friend, God knows about it. God's eye is not turned against you. Lastly, God is ever present. Proverbs 15, verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. My friend, today, if you feel alone, may I assure you that God is present. God is close to you. Well, this loving God, this good God, this merciful God, this uh, ever-present God is close to you. As the psalmist says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Now, let's look further, my friend, to what it means to fear God and give Him glory. God is God. God is our Father and Creator. We are subject, my friends, to His authority because He made us and gifted us as an existence. When He speaks, we need to understand, when God speaks, things happen. That's how He spoke this world into creation. We would do well to listen to God's Word. God's word is powerful, and he is all that is holy. You know, oftentimes we consider God's word, the Bible, as just another book. But when we speak about God's word, it is the same God who created the heavens and the earth. By this word, he spoke, and things came into be. So when we uh, address God, or when we um, consider God, we need to consider that we ought to give him Glory, my friends. We ought to give Him glory. Let's look at this. Where do we get this idea from? We get it from in Revelation 14. We call this passage the three angels' messages. In verse 7 it says, Fear God and give Him what, my friends? Give Him glory because the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. But what does it mean to fear God? And give him glory. What does it actually mean? Acts 5 verse 29 says, But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. Even 
The early apostles knew this. In Deuteronomy, we also find this. So the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always and for our survival as it is today. My friend, it is beneficial for you and me to fear God. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, And because He is God, it only makes sense to revere Him. We are told that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. My friend, it is for our benefit. You know, um, if you want wisdom, fear, fear God. If you want to have a knowledge of the Holy One and His insight, it starts with fearing Him, my friend. But obviously not the fear that we associate today. Because you... Um, we, we've discovered and we just read that perfect love casts out all fear. So when we fear, my friend, when you fear, when you realize that perfect love casts out all fear, it is, this, it, is, it is then that you discover that the fear that you have is not arbitrary. It is not uh, difficult because you are fearing a loving God. And in fact, if we use this, the word fear as we use it today, there is nothing to fear in the Father. All we need to have is that faith in the Father. We've got nothing to fear uh, for the future even. All we need is faith in the Father. Yes, friends, we show God respect and acknowledge His ultimate sovereignty by devoting ourselves, our families, to studying His Word in the Bible and understanding His precepts. Now, this helps us recognize our sinfulness, our inadequacies, our need for a Savior. In return, He will give us wisdom. He will give us wisdom, my friend, if we recognize that we are in need of a savior. You need a savior. I need a savior. But it all starts with the respect and acknowledging his ultimate sovereignty, my friends. Now, let's look at God the Father and, and in the fact that he desires to have a relationship with each one of us. He loves his children with an everlasting love, as Jeremiah puts it, my friends. And he wants to spend time with you. Just imagine, the God of the universe doesn't just want you to know about him, but he wants you to know him. And this is what we will look at, my friends. But how does a human being really know God? Think about it, my friend. When you want to spend, uh, when you get to meet someone, I know that the very first thing that um, you do and you want to get to know that person better is not only via um, any di digital platform, but there comes a time that you really spend time with that person. There comes a time when you... Um, observe each other's behaviors and you do things together whether it is something on you you're working together with um, or something you both enjoy but the fact remains my friends that you spend that quality time with your friends or people that you love my friends now i want to you want you to consider that when we're afraid god promised us that he will be close to us. When we're worried, God promised us that he will carry us. My friends, God the Father, when you are sick, God the Father promised us that he will bring healing, not only to your physical body, but even to your spiritual uh, needs. My friend, when you need forgiveness, there's a promise that God made today, this loving Father has made, that He will forgive you and me. He has also promised that when we need wisdom, He will give to all to those that ask. Also, wherever you are, you might be sitting alone today and you have the sense of loneliness. He has promised you, He has promised us, my friends, that He will provide um, comfort for our loneliness and also when we are brokenhearted. 
And yes, my friends, we all face a, a broken heart or had a broken heart at one stage, but he promised us that he will be the balm in Gilead. Yes, my friend, these are all attributes of God. These are things that we need to consider about God. Because, my friends, God cares for us. God is attentive to our every thought, our every need, our every desire. The Bible talks about how He knows the number of our of hairs on our heads, and He knew us even before we were born. He even knows what's bothering us before we pray or ask Him or tell Him about it, because He cares for you. First Peter five seven says, casting all anxieties on Him. Because why? He cares for you. He doesn't want us to be anxious, my friend, or afraid, because He cares for you. He has promised to care for us so we can go through life without fear. That's why He asks us not to worry about our lives, because He cares for you and me. Friend, this is something, this is a topic the topic of God disciplining us. Uh, we know the first verse that probably comes to mind is in uh, Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12. You know the verse, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or uh, be wary of his reproof, for the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. But let's inspect closely God's discipline towards us. How does God, this all-loving Father, how does He discipline us? Does He zap us with a lightning bolt, my friend, if He doesn't like something we did? No. It's important to remember that discipline doesn't necessarily mean punishment. It does not even mean God is angry or has a desire to inflict pain. The very word discipline, my friend, implies teaching. It implies correction. It implies that He wants to save you and mold you into a better person, make you in what you ought to be. So discipline, my friend, is not something that we should run away from because it's coming from a place of perfect love. You know, sometimes parents or oh, I know parents discipline their children. I discipline my children. But oftentimes we sit back and we recognize, ah, I should have done something different or there's a better way to do these things. But God does not have um, that second thoughts because He is a perfect Father. He is a per His, His discipline comes from a place of perfect love. God might allow us to see the full consequences of our actions. And this is true, my friends. I was actually just uh, listening to uh, one of the programs where people said that sometimes there are times when people fall that you need to take the mattress away from underneath of them so that they can feel the full consequences of our actions. Now, uh, we know that different scenarios and different um, situations cause for different actions. But we also know that when we might face trials, we wish God would remove from our lives, but instead He goes through um, them with us. He says, uh, count it all joy when we face trials of various kinds, because the test of our faith, um, it is the test of our faith that make us strong, my friends. Yes, you know the wonderful picture of those uh, footsteps uh, on the on the beach and the two uh, rows becomes one. It is during those difficult times, my friend, it is then that God carries carries you, carries me. Titus 2, 11 says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. The Bible, the Bible compares God's discipline as training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives. The grace of God, my friend, has appeared to me and to you. God's discipline brings us to salvation. But you know the best thing about God the Father's discipline is that even in the toughest of time, He is there with us and will provide us a way to endure it. 
even during the toughest times, my friend, even the discipline that he gives, God still is taking care of us. Now we know that we live in a sinful world. When humanity made a choice in the Garden of Eden to know both good and evil, the world became as it is today. Good and evil surround us, my friend. And the consequence of our choices play out. But even so, God offers us His protection. He is our refuge. He is our strength. A very present help in trouble. That is who God is. One example of the story is the story of Job, um, who suffered far more than most. But God was always working on his behalf. And his faith, Job's faith in God was rewarded. My friend, whatever obstacles you face in your lifetime, you can be assured that God will never forsake you. He will never leave you. The Bible teaches us that we ought to be strong and courageous. Uh, do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who, gives, who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. That is a wonderful promise, my friend, and the promise still stands today. You know, knowing about God the Father is so important because I believe it helps us understand and know God in an intimate way. You see, if you think of God as an arbitrary person or a ven just vengeance, uh, you know, and He does not love, it will be very difficult for you and even for me to trust a God like this. But I find myself that this picture of God, this unfair God, this God that only brings destruction and disaster has become more popular in today's society. But today I want to tell you, my friend, that God is love and so much more. God is patient and so much more, my friend. God wants you. He desires you and he has your best interest at heart, even, my friend, eternally. Now, summary, as we discuss what we believe, I think it is good and proper to look at our fundamental statement and discover what we believe. God the Eternal Father is the creator, source, sustainer, and sovereign of all creation. He is just and holy, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. The qualities and powers exhibited in the Son and the Holy Spirit are also those of the Father. The Bible noted about God the Father. God is our Father in heaven, and we are His children. God is a Father to the fatherless. We looked at how God is the Father of Jesus. The Bible teaches us that for by Him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created, my friends, through Him and for Him. Yes, my friend, today we want to make that application to you today, that you experience God's love, that you recognize that the character of God, it can be seen clearly in uh, Jesus. You know, I often say that Jesus uh, is God's selfie. You know, when you take a selfie and you have to look at the photo, if, you take a, if God had to take a selfie, you'll see Jesus because we recognize who God is through the revelation of Jesus. Jesus spent time with sinners. Jesus healed people. Jesus was close to the brokenhearted. Jesus wept when uh, there was death of his friends or even a misunderstanding of who he is. But we know that this is the character and the perfect character of God. Today, I want to invite you, my friend, to trust this loving Father. Trust Him, my friend, as I believe His face is turned your way. You know, the story is told 
of a war-torn country where a father and a daughter were stuck inside of their house because bullets were flying, uh, bombs were going off, and it was the middle of the night, and the, f the little girl was afraid, as little girls would be, and she asked her daddy, Daddy, where are you? And the daddy said, My daughter, I am laying right next to you, but because it was so dark, all she wanted to know is, Daddy, where are you? And she kept on asking this question, Daddy, is your face turned my way? Today, my friend, I want to encourage you and tell you, God's face is turned your way. No matter what's going on outside of, of your home or even in your home or even in your heart, know that God's face is turned your way. He is interested in you, even if the house is dark, even if your situation is God, dark. God, the loving Father's face, is turned, is turned your way. May this be the picture, my friend, that you experience with Him today. We want to thank you, my friends, for tuning in to the I Believe presentation series. And uh, next time, we'll look at God the Son. I do pray and hope that you will join us. And uh, before we separate one from another, come, let's say a word of prayer. Our Father, thank you that your face is turned our way. Thank you, Lord, that no matter where we are, no matter what's going on, we have a loving Father. Bring this knowledge to our hearts, Lord. May it not only stay head knowledge, but may it be a heart transformation in how we experience and relate to you, God, our Father. Thank you for being close to the brokenhearted. Thank you for being close to those who are widows and um, our fatherless father. And thank you that soon and very soon we will see you face to face. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us for our episode in the I Believe presentation series. If you have any questions or if you'd like to make contact with us, please do so at our contact details in the description or on our social media sites. Thank you so much and God bless you.